All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another product review slash unboxing by myself, Justin Kane. I'm with Audio and Vision. We do home theater, network, and audio video installs in the Phoenix area. So if you need any help with uh, your home audio, video, and networks, go ahead and give us a call. I'll just get right into it. We're unboxing today and doing a review on a Sonos Beam. So I got my trusty, my rusty, trusty, rusty uh, knife and don't cut towards you. All right, look, it's got a handle so you can cart this thing around. It came in a big box and it has a handle. So this handle got used for all of about two seconds. Cool, so typical Sonos packaging is always put this felt around it. It keeps it nice and shiny, stops it from getting scratched. I really appreciate their effort and it's custom fit. I mean, the seams on this thing, it's like, it's like sewed. It's like some seamstress with some grandma with a sewing machine, like actually like made this things. Okay, so what do we got? We got our Sonos beam, we got our manual. It looks like there could almost be a CD in here, but I know there's not a CD in here because nobody makes CDs anymore. Check out this construction of this box. It's like properly engineered and designed. Somebody spent a lot of time on this box. Wow, and there's like a Sonos, look, there's a Sonos logo right here. It's like a weird carbon copy of the Sonos Beam right there. Anyway, probably a percentage of the price you pay for Sonos is just the packaging. I don't want to mess this up. I'm, I'm like so impressed with this, with this duvet or so impressed with this custom fit cloth cover. It's amazing. All right, I'm messing it up. It's fine. There it is. Is it upside down? Is it right side up? I don't know because Sonos is a palindrome. Not only that, it's like an upside down palindrome. You can you can rotate it and it still says Sonos. Backwards, forwards, front, left, right. It's genius. I don't know if there's another word that does that. At the very top, we have, they, they did away with the hard buttons. In fact, the only button on here that clicks is this back one right here, which is the sync button. And that's, that's what you use to reset it and to pair it with the app. It's got a built-in microphone, tiny microphone in there, so it's gonna be listening to you at all times. I'm just joking. It's, well, I mean, it is gonna be listening to you at all times. If you turn on the Alexa features. So this is an Alexa-enabled soundbar. Here's an icon right here with four dots and one with four dots. That's for volume up and volume down. And then the center one is um, play and pause. It's really cool and slick the way they do this, but you're not gonna be accessing these buttons very often. Most of the control with this is gonna be either through the app or through a control system if you integrate it. Let's check out the back. It's got power. There's your power cable. These right here, these are pretty standard. If you lose this power cable, by the way, you can find one at like any thrift store or anywhere they're selling appliances. They'll usually, or used appliances, they'll usually have like hundreds of these laying around. Pretty standard plug right there, goes right in, and it's flush, everything's nice and clean. And on the back, we have an ethernet port. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not that's a gigabit or a 100 base T ethernet, but we'll find out. And then we have an HDMI. The one thing they did away with on the Sonos Beam, which I'm kind of upset about, is the optical input. And they still give you the option of doing optical with, through an adapter, but I'd still rather have it on the sound bar. There is, seems to be a lot of confusion with this HDMI port. It doesn't display video. It's not a video player. And actually, to my surprise, when they introduced the HDMI port on these Sonos beams, I thought there was gonna be like an on-screen menu, like a navigator, or at least you could show like artwork of the song that's playing on the screen. There's no video capabilities with this. The reason they put the HDMI port on here is for the latest way of getting sound out of your TV, which is through ARC or ARC audio return channel. What that means is there's gonna be one HDMI port on your TV and it's gonna have ARC listed next to it. If you look in the back of your TV, you'll see a port that says ARC. That port can receive video, but it can also send back audio. The reason they started ARC is because your TVs now, I mean, the last, what, 10 years, now they're all smart, right? They're supposed to be smart. They have all this software inside of them and they have Netflix and YouTube and Hulu and everything else. And your TV can play video. It can be a video source. You can have an Apple TV as a video source, but you can also have your TV itself as a video source. And with video comes audio. So they did away with the optical connection on this. I find it easier to integrate product when you're given options. You're given RCA connections, you're given optical connections, you're giving audio return connections, but that's just that's just what we have to deal with now. So we have a, a play bar that has two ways of getting audio. One more feature I wanna talk about on this is they gave you threaded 
mounting holes. What that allows you to do is to use the custom, the sound bar bracket that they give you, but it also allows you to use whatever third party mounting bracket you want. This thing I can get up and mount it to a TV using third party brackets in like five minutes. So I really appreciate the fact that they did include threaded mounting holes. Really quick, I'm just gonna open up these adapters right here. They give you an HDMI cable, not really an adapter, it's just an HDMI cable. So that goes from the sound bar to your TV. And the only reason they give you an HDMI cable, remember, is for the audio return. That also means you have to use up one of the HDMI ports on your TV for audio. You're gonna have to give up one of those HDMI ports for this sound bar. It's another reason you should consider using this adapter. The adapter has a female HDMI on it, which means you need to pair it with this HDMI cable right here. We have an optical end attached to an HDMI cable. I don't think this adapter is gonna work for anything else. I bet you that they have their own proprietary way of doing that. You could try it on other devices. I just don't think it's gonna work. And then you got two ways of connecting it to your TV. HDMI, all right, which has to go into the audio return port of your TV. And then you have to go into your TV settings and tell it audio return to turn on. Audio return tends to be a little finicky and weird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This is the optical cable. This will plug into the back of your TV. Most of the TVs they're manufacturing now still have optical audio outs, which I appreciate. Thank you to the TV gods, the TV manufacturers out there for keeping at least optical audio out on these TVs. Let's dive into the specifications. Instructions say download the Sonos app. Yes, you need to do that in order to use this. You have to set it up with the app. You can't take this thing out of the box, plug it in your TV and be like rocking and rolling, all right? Another thing, you need Wi-Fi. You have to have Wi-Fi with an internet connection in order to do the app setup. So don't buy this if you don't have Wi-Fi. Okay, features and specs, here we go. From the Sonos website. I was trying to determine if this had Bluetooth in it, which is a question I get a lot. It's got Wi-Fi. It has 802.11bgn, so it's not AC compatible but most AC routers are going to be backwards compatible to at least N. Okay, so it supports Apple AirPlay 2, iOS 11.4 and higher. I'm assuming it's backwards compatible with Apple AirPlay 1. I'm looking for like more specs on this thing, but that appears to be it. So you get the choice between optical in, audio return, you can stream over Wi-Fi to this thing, or you can stream through the ethernet port on this. I didn't see Bluetooth enabled on here. If you're looking for a Bluetooth soundbar, Bose makes a really good one, so check it out. I think the reason they don't do Bluetooth, and I kind of agree with this, Bluetooth just kind of sucks. I don't recommend Bluetooth for your home. One more thing about this, let's say if you wanted to form a five, a build a 5.1 surround sound system with this, and you could do it in two ways. Three ways, actually, maybe four. One, you can take two Sonos Play 1s, put them behind you. This thing is right there on your TV. So you have your left, center, right. And in the Sonos app, it's really easy to configure surround sound in that way. Another way is the Play 1s could be Play 5s. That's kind of a little bit overkill because the Play 5s are huge, but you could have a Play 5 here and a Play 5 here and your Sonos beam right here, and you'd have a surround sound. If you wanted 5.1, Play 5, Play 5, Sonos sub on the floor, and now you have a 5.1. There is currently no way of doing 7.1 with Sonos. So you get the option of having two rears and a sub and that's it. So you can integrate third-party speakers with this and you would need a Sonos amp. And I've talked about the Sonos amp before. It has two powered outputs that you can connect to any 8 ohm, 4 to 8 ohm speaker, okay? If you'd use the amp in conjunction with this, you could use any third-party speaker you want. It, they could be in-ceiling speakers, they could be in-wall speakers, they could be bookshelf speakers. So we talked about the inputs and outputs on this. Sound quality, what do I think about the sound quality? I've installed this about probably 20 times now since it's come out, and I love it. Even if you don't build a surround sound setup out of it, the integrated left, center, right speakers really create a nice image for the audio in the room. Just blows my mind how something this small could sound that good and that clear. So do I recommend this on like your primary entertainment center? Probably not, unless you're like living in a, in a studio apartment or a dorm. I'd recommend this in like your master bedroom TV. You could simple, you could just hang it and you're done. I'd recommend this for like a patio TV, outdoor TV. Just be careful of the weather. This is not IP65 rated. It will not handle getting wet or getting super hot or dusty. You know, a workout room would be really good with it or a bedroom. Any of those secondary rooms that you have in your house that have TVs that you want to improve the sound quality and kind of 
of augment the TV sound, this is a great unit. If you're looking to build a surround sound system with Sonos, I really recommend you look at the Sonos Arc or a Sonos Play Bar if you want to really build a surround sound, a really good Sonos integrated surround sound. I think that's it for the Sonos Beam, the white one. If you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the comments section. Let me know what you think about the Sonos Beam if you have one or any questions you have about the Sonos Beam before you're thinking about making a purchase. And if you're in the Phoenix area and you want one of these installed in your home and you'd like some more integration happening in your home as well, you can give us a call. I'm Justin with Audio and Vision. This has been my unboxing and review of the Sonos Beam. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.